super heavy kraken powered aircraft this one gives the most variability in design choice because we can attach something to the front of it i'm just gonna try some very strange unconventional designs i want to see just how far we can go but i've got some interesting ideas got some very interesting ideas we're making the ultra kraken aircraft where am i going we can go anywhere we we with the kraken drive the possibilities are endless ideally we want it to be directly centered now the best thing to do would be this we will go to duna it is decided we'll see how it works it's gonna be beautiful regardless of what happens it's gonna be it's gonna be beautiful All right, this is this is our this is our prototype we got to set these to be closed cycle gimbal off and we're backwards well does it matter i don't think it's gonna matter does it see so, yeah. oh um there you have it the front fell off one of the wings just decided to disappear everything is subject to change yeah one of the wings just disappeared and then the rest of the aircraft just disintegrated and we also just almost fell forward uh, well, it's not going to work, but we'll launch it anyway. We're getting pulled into the... yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we watched it disintegrate at one frame every three seconds. Now, part of the problem is how we shaped this, but we can actually change this somewhat easily. I tested your crack and drive out. Bob was not happy. Over 400 Gs. Nice. I can't take credit for it. Um, the one who, the YouTuber who originally discovered the crack and drive was a YouTuber called Uba Nuba, but that cone that cone shaped design with the four simple four pieces uh is my is my original design all right let's go that's it it's off It's working! We are currently flying using two Kraken drives. Uh, and <laughs> one of the one of the fuel tanks just fell off at the bottom. Oh! <laughs> yep. That's, that's that. Getting uh, three frames every 15 seconds. And our computer's turning into a space heater. So let's go back to the VAP. Oh, I can go to Duna. I, at any point, I can make it to Duna. But we're trying to make, we're trying to make an aircraft that flies using the Kraken drive as propulsion. That's looking better. I think that's what broke off first. Yeah, look at that. We're at 10% throttle. Oh, SAS off? Okay. Yeah, we need to refine what's controlling what, right? Like, these don't need to be controlling the pitch. These don't need to be controlling the roll. We just want to get it flying. That's all. And it seems like, it seems like we have it. Let's see if we can do it while we're flying. Uh, advanced control. Uh, that's going to make it a lot more stable. We're definitely wobbling the... Who do not invert. Uh, we want it only to control the yaw. There we go. 
Look how many struts we have in the front of the... <laughs> Look at all these struts to get it so it doesn't just completely... The thing is, when you connect uh, any fuel tank to another fuel tank, it's not a strong connection. All right, let's see if we can turn up the heat a little bit. We're definitely putting it under load now. Yeah, it keeps wanting to roll to the right for some reason. All right, let's crank it a little bit more. Oh, nope, we're rolling a lot now. Yeah, we are almost in space now. Oh, oh, I press Z instead of X. <laughs> yeah, our Apple Apsis is plenty high. Like we're, we're good. Okay, now that we're in the vacuum or near vacuum, we should have a little bit more control. Yeah, it's not, it's not stable. It's not stable. Like when we hit the throttle, it just, see how that's rubber banding? Let's see how fast we can spin. Ah, getting pretty fast. See how much Bill Kerman can take. And it exploded. Look at all the joints, the, all those gaps in the joints. But yeah, I know what we need to change in the uh, in the design. The thing is, we have the two Kraken drives on either side, and we just don't need... We just don't need two Kraken drives. We need the Kraken drive to be in line horizontally and vertically, perfectly in line with the center of mass. Otherwise, any type of changes to the direction of the thrust created by the Kraken drive results in that level of instability that we just saw oh if we want to go to duna i'll show you how to get to duna real quick look we'll get to duna we'll get to duna real quick and uh yeah we're good gonna reverse burn right at the last second i'm gonna angle my angle my retrograde right on top of the anti-target Ooh, duna music nice uh oh we're catching atmosphere that's why we're that's why we were moving There we have it. We should have landed over there, I think. Just gonna put yeet on the uh on the plaque text. One more go and the lift off. <laughs> Question. Should we go to the ice cap? And I think the the answer to that is obviously yes. Another question is, where is the ice cap relative to here? We're getting, uh, the atmosphere is messing up our control. Even though the atmosphere is really thin, it still has an effect on the direction of the, uh, the craft, the vessel. Yeah, so we made it to Duna successfully. It was very easy and we didn't experience a single bug. All right, I'm getting a little bit cynical, but yeah, I look forward to hopefully being able to do multi-stage missions in this game uh, without experiencing serious, serious bugs in the game. Probably gonna take him some time, if we're being honest. 
Go to every planet and moon in the solar system. That's the challenge. Okay, well, we've been to... We've been to Kerbin, the Mun, Minmus, Duna. We went to Dress, but we didn't land on it. Now, a challenge would be go to all of the planets in a single stage. Crack and drive vehicle that can reach every single planet in the solar system in one stage. We are on Duna's ice cap now. Yeah, there you have it. We made it and look how rocky Ike is. Just uh, giant, giant mountains everywhere around us. We're putting yeet on all the plaque test texts because we can. All of the plaque texts will be yeet. It is tradition. Yeah, look how mountainous this is. It's crazy. Well, I mean, we could go anywhere, really. Bye bye, Duna. I'm going to land in Lave's Ocean because I can't. No, I think we're going to go to Pole. All right, Jewel should be somewhere there. There's Jewel. Can we see Pole yet? Yeah, it should be somewhere in that direction. We're not we're not close enough to it. It's tiny. Oh, we're in its field now. Okay, there it is. Wait, no, that's Jewel still. There it is. Ah, there, there it is. Okay, we found it. Pole, I think, is meant to kind of be like Io, which is a moon of Jupiter. There we go. Celestial camera makes a lot more sense to me. So we made it to Duna and now we're making it to pull all in one stage. Oh, what a look at that. Look how beautiful that is. quick board we eva'd and our entire ship just flew into the air but yes this is what the surface of hole looks like probably should have put some landing legs on this thing would have made it easier kind of like hovering see how we're hovering that that should not be happening all right eva uh no all right we're gonna go towards the mountain We are going to, uh, 
land on lathe there's jewel and there's uh there's lathe and that's tylo i think that is lathe and tylo yep and lathe is actually a ocean moon it would be like if europa had an ocean instead of ice and if it were a lot bigger we got this Oh, very, very cool shot. Oh, weird. It's like, it's not actually ground. Uh, we can... We can kind of propel ourselves if we... Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> it kind of works. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, now I'm going way too fast. And we died. But we did splash down in the ocean safely. Very nice. Highest altitude, 69,000 million meters. Very, very nice.